Who are you? Hello, this is, uh, my name is Brett Robinson. This is Alan Friedman, and we're both with TBS3. We race for uh, mobile racing in the Tybee 500 right now. Tell them what TBS is. It stands for Team Velocity Sailing. And then, and then out of all the teams, you are team number three out That's of right. six. Out of six total. Yeah, right. Last perfect. year we were Team Velocity 4. This year oh. we've uh, bumped up to Team Velocity 3. It's but that's like in the military. That's like getting a strike. Well, yeah, it doesn't strike. mean anything. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, it, it doesn't mean anything with ranking, skill, or ranking. Obviously, you've got like Misha and John Casey. They're both they're higher than us. They're TBS five and six, I believe. Um, but yeah, we're here racing in Taipei for our second year, and we're loving every second of it. All right, guys. This is what we're going. What what what, what I want to find out is that is that a lot of folks uh, after a meeting this morning what. We're going to kind of go back to an event that happened, and the reason and why we're doing this is we're talking about what the challenges are in this race, what some people like about it, what some people don't like about it, and what the weather, but what can also happen from it too. Now we've got a happy ending here, but it is part of it, and why we push safety and why you have to say these things. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from 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 yesterday. And what you do is you tell them what happened when you left the beach and the fact that you assisted a team that a man was overboard and you helped him get back in, which is it, it's what this race is about. It's camaraderie. And you pick it up from that point from the start of the race. Just tell your story. Fred, you want to take the beginning of it? Um, we, launched, uh, we launched in, it was Miami. Um, you were in Hollywood. Hollywood Beach, we launched from there, we hit, uh, went through the surf, we got turned over in the surf, uh, washed the shore, flipped back over, launched again, no problem, made it out, um, support start, we tackled the starboard and started going, and we saw uh, another team, uh, Team Velocity 2, had flipped over, um, or they hadn't flipped over, but one of the, the skipper, Don, had fallen off the boat and he was separated from the boat and then the boat was being sailed back to him by his crew and uh, we saw them flip over or uh, the crew flipped the boat over and when you're dressed in all the stuff that you're dressed in harnesses uh, you know bibs and life jackets and you're strapped in there's no swimming you got booties on there's there's not much you can do but float um, so we actually uh, were able to tack back over and pick him up and take him back to his boat and he kind of jumped off as we were going and we just shot off. Um, a couple, uh, the conditions were actually extremely bad on that day. It was blowing anywhere from 20 to 25. Uh, the, the swell was With extremely gusts. high. Gusts, I don't even know how high gusts were, but at some points they seemed to be above 25. Um, the swell was extremely high, and it was it was just some some rough conditions for these kind of boats. Um, a couple. We were in a fast reach. We were not spinnaker reaching, but we were um, we were reaching with the 20, and I guess we had gone about a third of the way through the leg, and we were both double trapped. Um, we were getting hit by waves, knocked off the boat, uh, trying to stay on, just you know, just trying to go fast, but trying to maintain ourselves. And at one point, at that point, um, the handle that my harness hooks into exploded and um, just dumped me into the water. And I hit the water and just shot off the back. And um, if you want to go from there, about well, we were overpowered. We were overpowered to begin with, with a, a double trap, and uh, we were about to go back in because one of the rudders had kicked up. The mass rotation was uh, was out a little loose, and we were gonna uh, well, do a couple of adjustments to sort of depower the boat a little bit. And instead, what had happened was that we just knocked off 180 pounds off the boat. So you can imagine what that does to the acceleration of these NACRAs, uh, it was pretty much on, <laughs> on one hole, uh, I was now on the tramp, 
and I didn't notice that Brett had fallen off uh, until he had, he was a good 25 yards behind me. Uh, I turned around, tried to keep the boat from going over, uh, immediately started putting the rudders back in the water and regained control of the boat. I was able to prevent it from going over and uh, it was about 150 to 200 yards later. These boats were moving pretty fast. Uh, it was, like Brett said, pretty tough conditions. The swell that was rolling through was anywhere from four to six feet and the wind was blowing pretty hard at that point. I saw another boat coming up behind us and uh, which was actually moving a little bit slower than we were. I thought they were picking up Brett as we had done to the previous sailor. They showed up. I could clearly see there were only two people on the tramp. I asked them if they had seen Brett. They said that they had not. I was told that uh, they would help us find him, but they weren't turning around. So after taking the boat into the wind, I successfully tacked. I guess that's when they called the Coast Guard from their boat. Um, I backtracked uh, as best as I could, with, you know, being only about 180 pounds on the boat, uh, looking for Brett. Uh, as I was backtracking, I'd also marked my position, or tried to mark my position on the GPS, which I was not acquiring satellite on. Uh, went to the spot, uh, hit help. That was not doing anything. Uh, went to the radio, wasn't getting anybody on the other end of it. I was trying to just alert the race committee or, or, or our ground crew of what was going on. And it quickly turned into an emergency situation. Brett had been in the water from anywhere from five to 10 minutes at that point. I put the boat into Hove 2 and stood up on it to see if I could spot him over the waves. They were reaching my chest, my stomach, and it was impossible to see anything. This all had happened pretty quickly. I was able to fish my cell phone out of the dry bag. Wasn't able to see the screen initially. I dialed my girlfriend's phone number, whom I knew was with our ground crew, and took off my goggles. Now I could see the screen a little bit more clearly after letting her know to just alert everybody. Uh, was told by Warren when they were putting the spot on the phone, I'm sorry, on the on the boat to give him a call if there was an emergency situation, which I did. At that point, I saw a yellow boat that was sort of slowly uh, making an approach to something in the water. I was had my fingers crossed it was Brett, saw him climb onto the boat, and uh, told Warren I thought that the situation was under control. I can't remember if I called him back at that point. Uh, they made it all the way back up to the boat. He jumped off, uh, came back on board, and we agreed to go all the way, or to just shoot out to Jupiter, and we would hash things out once we got there.